Winds of up to 200 kilometers per hour and storm waves as high as 8 meters devastated the city of New Orleans, flooding 80% of its area and resulting in 1,800 deaths and a million displaced people. It was August 29, 2005, when Hurricane Katrina marked the most catastrophic natural disaster in the history of the United States. It was the third deadliest hurricane in the country's history in terms of loss of life, and by far the most destructive in terms of damage, resulting in an estimated economic cost of $125 billion. In this video, we look at the story of Hurricane Katrina. Why was New Orleans such a perfect target for this catastrophe, and what were the structural and management errors that contributed to this tragedy? Like many hurricanes, Katrina began as a tropical depression, that is, an area of low pressure with winds up to 63 kilometers per hour, which then evolved into a tropical storm, officially receiving the name Katrina off the coast of the Bahamas. Just two hours before making landfall at the tip of Florida, Katrina intensified into a Category 1 hurricane. Up to this point, it didn't seem like a particularly worrisome phenomenon. The worst came once it entered the Gulf of Mexico. It was here that the hurricane grew to a Category 5, the highest value on the Safferson scale, which measures hurricane intensity. Category 5 means a hurricane with winds over 252 kilometers per hour, and in fact, Katrina reached a peak of 278. And this happened right over the waters of the Gulf of Mexico because warm waters, like those in the Gulf, you could say act as fuel for a hurricane's engine. We've made a dedicated video on how hurricanes form and develop, so check it out if you missed it. Anyway, as the hurricane moved up the Gulf, it then dropped to Category 3, precisely because in the northern part of the Gulf the waters are colder and provide less energy to fuel the hurricane. And that's how it made landfall on August 29th on the coasts of Louisiana and Mississippi, with winds up to 205 kilometers per hour. The impact with the coast was devastating, especially for New Orleans, which suffered damage never before seen in its history. A Category 3 hurricane with powerful winds around 200 km per hour is already devastating on its own, but the destruction of the city of New Orleans was especially catastrophic for one specific reason, the very structure of the city itself. The metropolitan area of New Orleans is actually located in a natural depression between the Atlantic Ocean and Lake Pontchartrain and is crossed by several canals. 80% of the city is therefore situated below sea level, which is why it is protected by levees about 7 meters high. In fact, it was this very structure of the city and the protective levees themselves that played the main roles in the disaster. That's because the damage from Hurricane Katrina didn't come directly from the hurricane's winds, but rather from the rising sea level. Break time equals 0.5s forward slash. In fact, hurricanes, in addition to strong winds, can also produce what are called storm surges. These aren't single giant waves like in the case of tsunamis, but rather a general rise in sea level. This happens because hurricanes bring low pressure, and low pressure means exactly that. The atmosphere pushes down less, loosening its grip on the surface of the sea, which is then free to rise a bit, almost as if it's being sucked upward. And the strong winds generated by the hurricane push on this water, creating even quite significant waves. And as bad luck would have it, Hurricane Katrina hit the coast perpendicularly, resulting in the highest storm surge ever recorded in the United States. Keep in mind that, on average, Intense hurricanes create storm surges around 3 to 5 meters, while the storm surge generated by Katrina was 8 and a half meters. And remember, the levees in New Orleans were only 7 meters high. The consequences were devastating. The levees protecting New Orleans broke in 53 places, and 80% of the city was violently flooded. This didn't happen only in New Orleans, but along the entire coastline, the coasts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. The water penetrated up to 10 kilometers inland. However, it should be said that, in theory, the city of New Orleans was supposed to be protected from winds like these. Its unique structure was well known, and the city was actually surrounded by a complex system of levees that, even though they were only 7 meters high, should have been able to withstand a hurricane like this. So then, what went wrong? 
In theory, the levees in New Orleans were designed to withstand a storm surge from a Category 3 hurricane like Katrina. But that wasn't the case, and investigations revealed that there were several mistakes, both in the assessment and in the construction of the levees themselves. First of all, how were these levees built? The basic element is the levee itself, which is essentially a mound of earth with a very wide base so that it stays firmly in place even when faced with very high waves. In some of these significant mounds, walls were carefully installed that could be I-shaped, meaning they were perfectly vertical or T-shaped with a substantial horizontal element supported by sturdy legs. Now, what exactly happened then? There were two main pressing problems. The first was that there wasn't an accurate assessment of the porosity and compactness of the soil beneath the levees. Basically, water managed to seep under the levees, and it wasn't taken into account that it could also seep between the earth of the levees and the walls themselves. The result? The water manages to pass underneath the levees, the soil, and the levees themselves get eroded. The walls are no longer stable, and they collapse. Then there's the fact that the levees, which remember were seven meters high, were actually lower than the storm surge, which reached up to eight and a half meters. So some of the water managed to get over the walls. Honestly, that's something you expect in a violent hurricane. The main problem was that the levees weren't well designed to resist erosion. So when the water passed through, it wore them down. At that point, the water could rush into New Orleans with full force. And let's remember, the city is below sea level destroying countless buildings and flooding the city for a full 43 days. The city was equipped with water drainage pumps precisely because of its geography, but they were designed to handle flooding caused by rainfall. They could do very little in the face of the amount of water that flooded New Orleans. But the problem wasn't just an engineering one. At first, the emergency was underestimated. The importance of evacuating quickly was completely underestimated. On August 26th, three days before the tragedy, Louisiana Governor Kathleen Blanco declared a state of emergency, and the next day, August 27th, residents were advised to evacuate the at-risk areas. Advised, not ordered. The actual order to leave the city was only issued on August 28th, the day before Katrina arrived. But for many people, by then it was too late. Those who didn't have a car couldn't leave the city, and attempts to quickly organize an evacuation service by bus failed. 1.2 million people evacuated, but about 100,000 still remained in the city, and 1,200 died in New Orleans, mostly by drowning. That's about two-thirds of the total hurricane victims. For the survivors, a shelter was set up in the Superdome, the city's football stadium. But its management was also flawed. It was overcrowded, poorly equipped, with bathrooms and air conditioning that stopped working. The city needed help from the outside, but that too arrived late. The National Guard entered New Orleans only on September 2nd, after three days of difficulty accessing basic necessities like water and food, during which a health emergency also arose. In short, the city proved to be completely unprepared for such a situation, and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency was harshly criticized for this. Once the waters receded, a million people were left homeless, and the following year New Orleans lost 55% of its population. The city was then largely rebuilt, and today the population has returned to 80% of what it was in 2005. The levee system was also restored, taking into account all the structural mistakes of the past and providing the city with better protection. Today, New Orleans has once again become the vibrant cultural center it was before the hurricane, but Katrina remains an indelible scar in the history not only of the city, but of the entire United States. Thank you for following me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one, here on Geopop.